What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Brother MT, and we're here with another Metric Mate Minute podcast. On the Metric Mate Minute podcast, we cover leaders from all over the world telling you about how they do what they do, why they do what they do, and how staying fit keeps them in their best mindset. Let's go. What's going on, everybody, with the Metric Mate Minute? Glad you could join us here for another week because every week we're bringing you some of the most amazing leaders out of industry, out of the world, out of everything that's going on so they could give you some information, tell you about their journey, and help you be a better person so you can reach your star as you continue to climb. The stars that I bring on are always going to shine bright, so make sure that you take the information that they provide and take it close to heart. They're going to give you contact information and all of that stuff. You need to definitely use it because every week I'm going to try to bring you the hottest. And this week, of course, is no different. I say that every week, but I believe it in the bottom of my heart. Antoinette Mosley, one of the most amazing people that I've known for a long time. I'm not going to tell you how long we're going to start dating ourselves. I don't got no time for that. But she has been an amazing person, an amazing human being since the day that I met her. And she's continued to grind, climb and shine as much as anybody else. You know, it's not my job to give you the information about who they are. I'm going to leave that up to them. So Antoinette, introduce yourself to the community and tell them why I think you're so awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And I completely agree. It has been so many years, um, but so thankful for you and all that you're doing for the community. And just so excited about Metric Mate and excited to be on today. So thanks for having me. Thanks for all that you're doing to help others with their health and fitness journey. So yes, my name is Antonetta Mosley, and I am the founder and principal consultant of I Follow the Leader LLC. And so we're a leadership consulting firm specializing in diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, education, and strategy. So really making sure to help individuals and companies with their diversity, equity, inclusion journey, make sure that we have workplaces, uh, community environments, churches, just everywhere you go, where we have environments where everyone feels they can belong. So that's really the crux of our business is making sure people are prepared. Obviously we've seen so much happen this year, um, but this is a company that we've really been going on for the last four years and helping workplaces and individuals make sure that they have environments where people can belong and where everyone can belong and not just belong, but, but get ahead. That is absolutely amazing. And this is the perfect time for that to be happening. There's so many conversations about inclusion, making sure that everybody is counted, everybody is heard, that this is a niche that is needed in a myriad of different places around the globe and even and especially in our country. So where have you seen your services been most being most impactful? Like what sector of, of industry? Gosh, yeah. So we've worked a lot with nonprofits. We've worked with universities and with large corporations. So I would say really the, the value that we see is when leaders really want to do this. So it's not just a checkbox. <laughs> it's not just a box we're bringing on and off the shelf, but regardless of industry, when the leadership really cares and they make this a strategic initiative is when we really see the best results. Yeah. Got it. No, that's that's hit a lot of good points because that portion has been a checkbox for so long, making sure you have your, your African-American or black person, making sure that you have your Asian person, Asian American person has been a <laughs> checkbox for so long and making sure that it's a part of the strategic focus going forward to make it more equal and not just provide the societal equity that's been determined in the law. That that is amazing. So how have you worked with companies or how have you seen companies transition from being checks box oriented to being more strategically focused on inclusion? Yeah, and I think that's such a good point you made is, you know, we used to have this in the law. So it was affirmative action. And so really that led to tokenism. So I'm going to make sure I have this percentage of, of Black people, this percentage of minorities. 
And when we talk about DEI today, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're, we're not go going to the affirmative action of the past. So it really is about, okay, can everyone make the same amount of money? So if we have the same experience, do we have the same access to leadership? And so not just getting in minorities, but do they feel a sense of belonging? Can we bring our whole selves to work? Right. So <laughs> can I be myself? Can I wear my hair the way I want to? Um, can I talk to you the way that I want to? Or do I have to put on a mask? And so I think seeing companies shift from affirmative action to really a DEI strategy has been great to see that. It's been so important. And I think it's also taken a lot of people to a new place. So you, you, you have to learn something different. We have a lot of people in HR and leadership who have been there for 30 years. And so how do they face these changing demographics? You know, millennials, we, we've kind of scared people. Um, we are the most diverse group in our nation's history. Gen Z is going to be even more diverse. So how do we get ready for that? Seeing all of these different types of people and we can't just go, okay, my black employee is going to think this way, but realizing we are all unique and we all identify in, in different ways. No, that, and, that, and that's, that's the core crux of everything. We're all different. We're all our own people and we need to be the, the best way to, to get the best out of everybody to exceed your actual expectations of performance is to make sure that you're taking in those differences and utilizing those differences to move yourselves forward. That's perfect. That's, that's what we need. That's what we have to see to continue to thrive. Yep. Yeah, no, so important. And that's, you know, my personal mission in life is to help individuals and companies thrive. And so it does take a different, you know, like all of your other interviewees have said, and like you say, it does take a different mindset. It takes a different, takes discipline, working hard. It's not going to be easy. So I tell people, this is a journey. So I understand we want our workplaces to immediately be diverse, equitable, and inclusive, but it's a journey just like athletes know, just like anyone who has been successful knows, it is a journey you're going to need help along the way. Indeed, indeed. So you've worked with organizations from large to small. You've seen the different ways that these new thought processes, these new new uh, identities have been incorporated into everything that's going on. Is it equally as hard for a small company and to a large company to integrate these or does it kind of change depending on your your size? Yeah, so I would say size use a lot of times equates to resources. And so that's where the larger companies, they may have multiple people on their HR team to help, you know, put the initiatives across the organization. But what I've seen is even small organizations really giving the onus on the employees as well. So realizing you have a lot of amazing employees who want to help they want to help your workplace to be amazing and in a place where you can recruit the best talent, right? We all want to work with the best talent. Uh, so I've seen a lot of small and large companies form diversity, equity, inclusion committees or task forces. So even if you don't have the resources, there's a lot that you can do internally with your amazing champions and employees who will help you move the needle. Love it. Love it. Well, good to hear that the resources are actually being allocated for this types of stuff, because you hear all the time the company doesn't really care about what's going on unless they put money behind it, which a.k.a. Yes. resources. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that people are so interested in, in this movement, in this change to the point where they're allocating resources uh, into it is and being strategic about the thought processes and building upon what was already done to make sure that it's better. That that bodes well for the future. And thank you for if you, nobody's told you today, I'm going to tell you today, <laughs> thank you for being a part of that change. So hopefully that our children will not have to endure some of the microaggressions and the, yes. the, <laughs> the thoughts yes. that that proliferate through the corporate America world today. Yes. Thank you.
So the pandemic has affected people across the globe. Um, that's the point of it being a pandemic. It's global. Um, and it's changed the way that a lot of us had to go about doing business and moving our missions forward to try to be the best that we can be. How has this situation changed the way I follow the leader has moved and maneuvered through this landscape? Of course. Yeah. So of course, you know, usually I would be going out and, and speaking at conferences, meeting people in person. And I think with a topic that is uncomfortable for so many people, um, I say it's a courageous conversation now, but hopefully in five years, talking about racism won't be courageous. It will be normal. And so that is something that I definitely miss is seeing people face to face, obviously through the screen. I try to be this energetic. This is, you know, this is how I've always been. But, um, you know, obviously there's only so much that you can exude through the screen, um, but still trying to make sure I make people feel comfortable uh, make making sure that I'm vulnerable first when I'm doing trainings or conversations. And so that has helped. Obviously, I miss being in person with people, but it is really great that we have technology. There's amazing platforms today. I'm able to poll people um, in real time. That's a way that we've been able to engage instead of doing some of the small group work. And so I think it's really been shifting and, and being quick and nimble and shifting to maybe I can't do that conference this year or do a, do an in-person training, but I can do virtual training. And so really shifted to virtual training, um, but obviously, Due to the unfortunate events of this year, again, having many Black people, again, be murdered um, at the hands of police, we've seen such an increase in the need. And so I, you know, I'm glad for that, that we are seeing companies realize, some of them for the first time, that this isn't going away, that this is an issue they have to confront and face. And so I'm really proud of everyone out there, whether they're black or not, of, of all the allies saying we have to confront this in the workplace as well. And so that's been a major shift through, through 2020. People have had more time to self-reflect, um, to watch the news, to stay in tune. And so we've really seen that affected uh, affect the DEI field and, and the need for it. Obviously, the need has always been there, but seeing people realize this is not just a heart issue, it's also a business issue. So we've seen all of the data now saying teams that are more diverse, teams that have more women perform better. And so now companies are realizing to be competitive, I not only need to care about the things that my employees care about and value, but I'm not going to be competitive if I don't address this. No, no, that's real. And that's yeah. real. And like being able to have that data, have that support from the science and the research that's been done has definitely made this process a lot easier and people being more data oriented. It's like, so how, I know that a lot of the stuff in the past, especially demographic stuff has been more uh, uh, objective than, than yeah. actual <laughs> numerically based, how has that new data analysis, data collection mindset changed the way that you all approach DDI? Yeah, so much because, you know, I, I have my master's. So when you're writing your thesis, obviously all they care about is, is the data and the research. And so again, companies now are, are addressing this as a strategic issue versus just a heart issue. And so that changes the game. That helps the industry so much when people are focused on data, because then we're not just putting out a few initiatives. We're putting out initiatives, we're measuring them. So you have a measurement plan with your goals, and then you're checking back in. So if you have a goal that you want to have you know, more diverse employees come in and also be retained are you measuring that? Are you surveying your employees, right? So I always say we can make assumptions, but for me to really do a cultural audit, 
we need to survey all your employees. How do they feel you're doing with these issues? And once companies take that lens, you get a lot more information, a lot more data. And unfortunately, some go, wow, I'm not doing as, as well as I thought, but then they have the information to move forward. And we can say, yes, let's set some goals for next year. What, what is the strategy? So I've really seen it help the industry. You know, I became a certified diversity professional this year. So you're seeing it where this is something, <laughs> no, thank you. But no, it's, it's great to see when people are licensed and you can get certifications and show this is an industry that is not going away. And let's make sure that we have professionals come in and help you. The Metromate team has been working tirelessly for years to be able to bring you a platform that allowed you to see your strength training data in a whole new way. And we're proud to say that we're finally at that place. The Metric Mate Smart Pin, the first device in the Metric Mate lineup, is available for pre orders on our website at themetricmate.com. So take your time, go over there, check out all of the information on our smart apparatus, and get in line to be one of the first people in the world to have a Metric Mate Smart Pin help them more efficiently and effectively achieve their fitness goals, their life goals. We achieving all goals. We might even make help you achieve professional goals. You could take us in to your boss and he'll be like, man, you must be very smart. We're going to give you a promotion because you use MetricMate. <laughs> so go ahead and check us out at TheMetricMate.com. Again, that's TheMetricMate.com to pre-order your smart pen today. We also have amazing polo shirts. We got some crew neck shirts for you to be able to work out in. We got hoodies coming. We got face masks. So if you just want to support the Metric Mate movement as we continue to work, grind, to offer the community a beautiful platform that nobody else is able to touch nowadays, check us out at TheMetricMate.com. Can't wait to see you there. 100%, 100%. And then the reason why she started chuckling because I gave my little my clap to her for being so amazing. You know, I have to support my amazing people and shameless plug for metric mate, because we always support data. That's right. Yes. Get your pre-orders for your pins on the website. Data, data, data. <laughs> Get it. Yes. I love it. I love it. And you guys don't know, but I know Marcus from high school. And so I, I love just how much like he's grown and continued to be intellectual and a thinker. And so he, he's been like that since I've known him and just so proud of him and metric mate for all they're doing. Because again, the data is what matters and what get, what gets measured gets managed. So love that you guys are about the data as well. What gets measured gets managed. I'm going to have to take Yeah, that's that. Peter, Peter Drepker. So he's like, if you want it to be managed, you got to measure it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, you might see that pop up in a couple metric mate advertisements coming up soon, like real soon. What, what is measured is managed. Got to measure it. <laughs> exactly. You have to. You have to. <laughs> it doesn't work otherwise. It, it just, yes. You're just throwing stuff in the air, you know, and then literally that's just the segue between what we're both talking about. And that's a way to find a similarity is that people go into the gym all the time and just lift weights and hope they're going to reach their goal. Just like people go in like, hey, I hired three black people last week. I think <laughs> yeah. I got my equity and inclusion under control. And it's like, yeah. no, if you don't, if you want to manage it, you got to measure it. If you're not measuring yes. it, then you're just throwing darts at the wall i love it i love exactly it. so yes. segue into the fitness portion yeah uh, we've already done bowls. we've known each other since high school and since high school as has been active you know running everywhere even in college she was running all over the place and of course with that physique still intact i'm sure you're still <laughs> keeping up the fitness routine how has fitness spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, because all of those are important, how has making sure that you led a fit lifestyle with those continued to help you be better and be the leader that you are today? 
Gosh, yeah. So, you know, ran track in, in high school and college, and that was such a huge part of my life. And it's such a huge part of the leader I am. And it's just so important for, for self-care, like you said, for spiritual, emotional care. And so, again, the, the data shows if, if you are healthy, if you are fit, if you're doing at least 20 minutes a few times a day, what that's going to do to your body, your mind, and soul. I'll say for, for all of my women out there who are over 30, it gets hard. It gets hard over 30. And so it's even more important to make sure that you have your routine, especially I know everyone listening to the podcast is a go-getter. And so for go-getters, it's easy to check off everything else except for that fitness and area for yourself. And so something that's really helped me is making sure, am I giving 20 to 30 minutes to myself a day? So one day I may not be able to do much, but stretch while I listen to a podcast or listen to an audible, but making sure I'm making that time for myself, for my body. And it just helps so much. I can't do as much as I used to, but again, it's, it's retooling. It's uh, reframing your workouts. I tore my ACL actually post-college playing flag football. Um, because that was something that filled me up, right? And so now I can't do all of those things, but I can do the bike. I can do boot camp type workouts. And so it's making sure as you age, as you evolve, um, as things change, that you keep making, that you keep having fitness be at that center, at that core. Um, it's something that can obviously make you, make you live longer. And so if we want to do great things, we need to make sure sure we have the health and, and fitness routine to do so. Love it. Love it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Now we're not going to just skirt over that uh, tour ACL like it didn't happen. Playing flag <laughs> football. Please elaborate on that one. Oh gosh. Yeah. So I just love competition. I was in the co-ed flag football league. This was probably six years ago now. And you know, I thought I was amazing, you know, and uh, maybe did too much, but I, I got a real football injury. So cutting, um, I'm a little crazy. I played through it the whole game, <laughs> tried to play the next game and was like, okay, I guess I'll go to the doctor. And they're like, um, ma'am, you tore your ACL and meniscus. I was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I have had to adapt since then. Um, and yeah, <laughs> but we are, we are still working with it and adapting and, you know, apps like yours are amazing because again, it does get harder as you age, as you have injuries. And so you really want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and also that you're getting the help that you need to recover and, and get back to a new place of fitness. Love it. Love it. Love it. No, so just, let's not play any games. I done brought you a couple beasts onto this podcast and Antonetta is no different. Don't, don't let the curls fool you. She was out here like putting some Ezekiel Elliott jukes on folks out here and, and, and just happened to go down and, and we're glad that she's okay and <laughs> moving forward with life without the, the competition of the flag football. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I ask a question to all of my guests when they come on. We we talk to people that have a myriad of experiences and you are one of those people that have seen and done a lot of things in your life so far. What is one hope diamond, freaking huge 1800 carat jewel that you can drop on the team? I mean, you've sprinkled some throughout your entire conversation, but if you had to sum up one that really, really sticks with you, what is that one for the group? Yeah, I would really say to, to find your purpose in life as early as you can, to find the thing that lights a fire in you and not only lights a fire in you, but changes the community and brings light to the community. 
So that's something I would really encourage everyone. If you don't know what your purpose is, if you haven't found that thing that brings you joy and brings others joy, to really tap into that. You know, we're about to enter a new year. That's always a great time to self-reflect, to plan. But yeah, I think that's really the gem is what are you leaving? What legacy do you want to, to leave on this earth? Obviously, we've just seen, unfortunately, so much death this year, starting with with Kobe Bryant, who obviously left such a legacy, but also so many people's grandmas and friends and, and, and family members due to COVID. And so I hope this year has encouraged people to find their passion, to do the thing that brings them joy and to continue doing it even through hardship. So I love reading stories about some of the great people in life and all of them have persevered. It's not easy. So I would just encourage people, find your passion, keep going, and then find a community of awesome people to continue to encourage you. That's why this podcast is great. Find that community, something that you can continue to tap into. Couldn't have said it better myself. Right. Couldn't have said it better myself. Like you got to be able to find that thing that makes you glow on the inside because then you can share that glow with everybody else. And okay. wrapped it up. I love it. <laughs> I, I won't add anything else to that. I'm done. I talk a lot, but not going to talk at the time. So Antonetto, please tell the community where they can find you, where they can get in contact with you, where they can follow you and get some more of this inspiration and, and, and great love that you're putting out. Of course. Yeah. So you, our website is ifollowtheleader.com. And then we're also on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And that's at ifollowtheleader. So we'd love to connect with you. Uh, and we're, we're going to try to get Metric Mate on soon to do a leadership interview. So definitely uh, ifollowtheleader.com, just leadership advice, but also some great diversity, equity, and inclusion education. Love it. Love it. Community. It's Antoinette Mosley, one of the most amazing people that I know. She is doing amazing things. She's giving y'all just a sliver of what she's got going on. And I love it. Um, definitely follow her. I follow the leader is an amazing resource to get great inspiration and to stay abreast of what's moving people going forward in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Like this has been a great interview. I can't wait for it to get released so everybody can take in all of this goodness and these wonderful gems that you're dropping on them and making sure that their diversity and inclusion is going exactly the way they want it to go. So thank you from the bottom of our heart here at Metric Mate and from the community as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time and I'm just so excited to see how Metric Mate continues to grow and is just such a great resource for people. So thanks so much for having me on. It was a pleasure. Metric Mate community, there's been another Metric Mate Minute, man. We've brought you another amazing guest. I'm doing my job. You know what I'm saying? All I can do is make sure I bring people on here that's going to sprinkle all the amazing jewels and tell you everything that you need to do to be as great as you. It's up to you to go out there and put it to work. Just like with Metric Mate, you could just plug the pin in, but you won't get six packs abs because you plugged the pin in. Because you downloaded the app, your thigh, you won't get the 32 inch thighs like Saquon Barkley. It won't happen. You got to put in the work. So we're giving you the opportunity to get the info. Hopefully, you're taking it and becoming as amazing as you want to be, amazing as we know you are. So we've been here for another Metric Mate Minute. Appreciate y'all as always for joining us because you don't have to know time here. Until next time, peace. Man, thanks everybody for joining us for another Metric Mate Minute. We appreciate everybody that comes through and shows us love in the Metric Mate community. Make sure that you stop over at themetricmate.com to find out more information about the podcast, about what we're doing, any of our blog information, the transcript of the show, and just to show us massive support. Also remember to follow us on social media at Metric Mate. Check us out, y'all. Peace. <laughs>